brought up uh, latest reports by the World Health Organization uh, saying that the healthy life expectancy in Africa has now risen uh, from 46 to 56 years. And though it's still behind the global average of 64 years, but the report says that uh, the African life expectancy doubled between the years 2000 and 2019. And this, it says, is compared uh, to the rest of the world where the expectancy grew by five years. And that's what we'll be talking about uh, with our guest, a partner at Cardinal Stone Capital Advisors, uh, Femi Ogunjimi. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on TVC News. Uh, well, let's start off with your uh, brief assessment of this report. And um, of course, the next issue would be how to sustain this feat. What are your thoughts in this regard? Uh, thank you very much for having me. I, I think it's quite an interesting report and it shows how much progress we've made in about the last 20 years. Um, it's interesting to note that um, according to the report, the 10 years um, is the highest uh, jump we've seen compared to other parts of the world. The rest of the world that has seen about five years jump. Um, I think the one thing to note is that a lot of the progress made is because there's been better access to primary health care, uh, which has in turn bringing down infectious diseases. However, we are now seeing the rise of chronic infectious diseases like hypertension and diabetes. And I think that is where a lot of the battle will be in the future, how to drive that down. Another concern, uh, in addition to the valid points you just raised now, would be sustaining this feat in spite of um, COVID disruptions and even uh, post-COVID uh, ramifications. The WHO noted this point about COVID disruptions and then the issue of uh, post-COVID uh, ramifications. Of course, we are living in these times uh, now. So what are the odds against, you know, uh, making this feat, increasing this feat uh, in Africa? So I think that uh, the odds are positive. Um, we will need a lot of investment. If you look at the data available to the World Bank, um, Nigeria in particular has about uh, 0 0.5 beds for 1,000 people, uh, compared to lower middle-income countries that have one bed for 1,000, and middle-income countries that have 2.4 beds for 1,000 people. That means, essentially, depending on which benchmark we yeah, are benchmarking Nigeria against, we need about 140,000 to 380,000 beds or about $9 billion to $23 billion in investment. So uh, the, the first thing is we will need to make a lot of investment. We've seen pick up investments in over the last one or two years, uh, particularly with um, the BOI and the federal government doing certain um, Certain loans for the healthcare sector. We also seen private equity funds, including people like us, investing in hospitals and other healthcare sectors. So there's a pickup um, in terms of healthcare investments, but it's still a drop in the ocean in terms of what is needed. All right. So uh, well, that's where my next question uh, is uh, will center on, uh, because the fact still remains that a number of Nigerians are still cut off of this um, of the existing uh, universal health uh, coverage plan, and that people have said you have also advocated in the past that. Um, there is need for more, some form of, of financing. Tell us uh, what you make of this. Tell, tell us more about this position, your position, and what the overall gains would be. So from a financing perspective, there are different buckets of financing that is needed. Um, like I mentioned before, if you're trying to get to the lower middle income level, just as a benchmark, we need about $9 billion in investment. And that needs to come from different buckets. That's going to be equity, that's going to be debt. And therefore, people, institutional investors like the pension funds, private equity funds like Cardinal Stone Capital Advisors, and other people in our space need to come together as institutional investors, first of all, to provide the equity to support these businesses. In addition to that, then there needs to come leverage from the banks and, and sometimes the government to provide that leverage so that together, working with institutional investors, we can build that. Uh, the returns are positive. They're quite positive, but it's a long-term play. It's not a invest today, get the money back tomorrow, especially given the amount of money you need. But what we have seen uh, globally is that we can make very positive returns 
uh, with healthcare investment. And there is strong demand in Nigeria that continues to be unmet. All right, Femi Ogunjimi, we thank you very much for speaking with us on TV's News. Many thanks again. Thank you very much for having me. A pleasure.